In this lesson, I'm going to describe and demonstrate how to use NPV, IRR, and MIRR in Excel. NPV, or the net present value, is the present value of cash flows and inflows and outflows for a stream of cash flows. And typically, the discount rate that we would use to calculate NPV would be the weighted average cost of capital for a firm. The internal rate of return, or IIR, is the discount rate that causes the net present value of a stream of cash flows to be equal to zero. In other words, it's the rate of return that the project, in many cases, is going to earn for the firm. The calculation of IRR assumes that cash inflows are reinvested at the calculated IRR. In other words, if we calculate an IRR of, let's say, 12%, the calculation itself assumes that any cash inflows we receive during the life of a project would also be reinvested at 12%. MIRR, or the Modified Internal Rate of Return, is the discount rate that causes the NPV of a stream of cash flows to be equal to zero, just like the internal rate of return. The difference between the two, though, is that MIRR does not assume that cash inflows will be reinvested at the IRR that's calculated. For MIRR, we can actually put in our own assumed finance rate, in other words, the, the cost of the money, and the assumed reinvestment rate, the return we expect to receive from reinvesting cash flows we receive from the project. We oftentimes will use MIRR when we get answers that are conflicting between NPV and IRR for non-mutually exclusive or for mutually exclusive projects or when we get multiple IRRs, which is what I'll demonstrate today. So I'm going to open up the Excel workbook titled Financial Functions. And I'm in the tab NPV, IRR, and MIRR. And as you can see, I've set up two graphs to demonstrate the effect of, on NPV of a change in the weighted average cost of capital. For our first example, we're looking at a a normal cash flow stream. What this usually is is a cash outflow at time zero representing some investment and then cash inflows based on that investment for the life of a project. To calculate an MP MPV in Excel, it's a little different than if you're using a calculator. Excel assumes that the first cash flow put in the MPV function occurs a year from today or a year from now. We don't want to make that assumption. Um, typically, we, we assume with projects is that we make our first investment today. So we're going to have to adjust the, the function and the formula for NPV based on that. So to calculate NPV for this project, we want to put in equals and then highlight the time zero cash flow because that's not going to go in the NPV function. And then put in plus NPV our rate is the discount rate that we're using. Again, it's typically the weighted average cost of capital. In this case, it's 10%. And then comma, and then you have value one, value two, and so on. You can actually just highlight the remaining cash flows for the project in close parentheses. And we get a net present value of $8.11 for this project. The internal rate of return is calculated as equals IRR. In this case, we don't have to separate the time zero cash flow. We highlight the cash flows, and in this case, we get an internal rate of return of 10.35%. This makes sense. It's slightly higher than the 10% discount rate, and we have a slightly positive NPV. The modified internal rate of return is calculated as equals MIRR. Again, we highlight our cash flows, and then we're asked for two values, the finance rate. So this is essentially the cost of money or the required rate of return on the money. For most of these types of problems, we would use the weighted average cost of capital for a firm, but there may be cases where you want to use a different rate. So I'm going to set this as 10%. And the reinvestment rate is the rate at which I expect to reinvest these cash flows. So at year one, I, my company's going to receive $200. What's the rate I think I'm going to get 
for, for the return on these cash flows. And that's the, the rate I'd want to put in here. For our purposes, we'll just set this at 10% as well. You'll notice that the MIRR is slightly different than the IRR because the IRR assumes that the cash inflows are reinvested at 10.35% and MIRR assumes the cash inflows are reinvested at 10%. To the right-hand side, I've, I've set up a, a table and a graph to demonstrate the effect of a change in the weighted average cost of capital. So that's what I have here, the weighted average cost of capital on the net present value. What I want to use here is a data table, and we'll use these quite a bit for sensitivity analysis. So here I'm going to put equals and select the NPV. Don't just type in the number or it won't do anything, it won't work. You actually want to set it equal to the number that you want to see changed. And then we're going to highlight the rest of the, the table here. Then we go to data, what if analysis, and then go to data table. So it provides us two options, a row input cell and a column input cell. This data table only has one variable that changes and that's the weighted average cost of capital. And it's in a column. So we, our numbers are in a column here. So we're going to ignore the row input cell in this case and just change and just put in a variable for the col column input cell. And that variable is the discount rate. So once I've done that, I press OK. And this gives me the NPV for each weighted average cost of capital I have here. And what Excel does here is that it goes in and it changes this number to whatever number is in this column. And it provides the result that we have in this column, in this cell. And as we can see, when we get to that internal rate of return of 10.35%, the weighted average cost of capital falls below zero, which is what we would expect. So that's our normal cash flow stream. Our non-normal cash flow stream looks like this. We have a large cash outflow at time zero, and then another large cash outflow at the end of the project's life. Uh, non-normal cash flow streams typically include more than one cash outflow during the life of the project, including the cash flow at time zero. We can get multiple IRRs as a result because the percent at which those future cash outflows are discounted back can affect the NPV of the project overall. So calculating the NPV, we do that just like we did it above, put in equals, Highlight the cash flow at time zero, add to that NPV, the rate at 10%, and then the rest of the cash flows. And note that I don't put in 0 0.10 here. I actually highlight 10%. That's important for the calculation of the data table. So we get an NPV of $41.35. Now we have our first IRR and our second IRR. Again, I highlight these cash flows. I get 3.4% for our first IRR. And then I don't know what I'm going to get for my second IRR. So here I'm just going to put equals IRR. And then you'll see it says guess. And that guess is in there because of the chance of a multiple IRR, where you may have more than one answer that gives us one discount rate that gives us an NPV equal to zero. So in this case, I'm just going to put in 0 0.20, kind of because I know the outcome. And it gives me an IRR, a second IRR of 24.56%. So now I'll calculate the MIRR. And here I'll put equals MIRR, my values. And then I'm going to choose 10%, my discount rate, for the finance rate and the reinvestment rate. And I get a modified internal rate of return of 10.41%, which would be the actual 
correct rate of return for my project. So now I'm going to graph both the NPV and the MIRR for each level of the discount rate or the weighted average cost of capital. Again, I'm going to highlight the NPV and I'm going to highlight the MIRR. So the only thing I've added here is a column for the MIRR. That's the only thing I need to change. I go to what if analysis again. So this is under the data tab, if you're not there. Go to data table. My column input cell again is the discount rate. And then I press OK. And you can see here at different weighted average cost of capital, we get a different NPV. We can see our first IRR is equal to 3.40. And that's where it crosses across that zero line. And then our second is at 24.56, where again, it crosses over that zero line. We can see the relationship between IRR and the discount rate, and it's not unexpected. So as the discount rate increases, the modified internal rate of return increases because we're increasing the rate at which the cash flows are reinvested for the firm.